Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, September 18th, 2018 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. One sadly still common exploit scenario are documents with links to SMB shares. The goal here isn't often to actually get the user to download and launch the file, but instead to transmit credentials to the SMB server. So to help you identify office documents that take advantage of this problem, Rob is going over some tricks how to identify these links in office documents without having to fully reverse these documents and figure out what else is happening with them. And then somewhat pre-announced, we got from Apple a new version of iOS, tvOS, and watchOS. Now, as usual, I'm not too concerned about all the fancy new feature in these operating systems, but instead about the security content. And there are a couple of interesting things that are being fixed here. First of all, the Safari URL spoofing vulnerability that already has been made public after Microsoft patched it in Edge. Well, that's now patched in iOS. And since we didn't yet get the new version of macOS today, Apple also released a new version of Safari for all current versions of OS X and macOS. This version of Safari again also patches this URL spoofing vulnerability. Another known Safari issue being addressed is a problem with autofill. Now, autofill is meant to only autofill data on particular sites, but due to this vulnerability, it was possible for an attacker to trick Safari into autofilling data into a malicious site. Another sort of interesting issue that's being addressed is that RC4 was removed as an encryption algorithm. So in summary, there are some critical security issues that you probably do want to address, and that's one reason to apply this update. There is also an update that actually can be applied to prior versions of iOS, iOS 11, but it does only affect one particular application, the Apple support application. Apparently, it leaked data that it wasn't supposed to leak. With these major updates, Apple usually does focus on features and only patches vulnerabilities in components that are essentially being replaced anyway. And then ES uh, probably throws in a couple of things like the URL spoofing, which has already been leaked and made known. So that's probably why they fixed issues like this in this update versus a security update that typically comes a few weeks or a month or so after the major update. Now, with the Safari update already patching some of these issues for macOS, it may not be as pressing to adopt the new version of macOS that's going to be released in a week. Typically, with new macOS version releases like this, there is a higher chance of third-party software having issues with this. So you definitely do want to be a little bit more careful with the macOS releases versus the iOS release. And we got an interesting new botnet that was found by NetLab360. And now a couple of interesting properties here. First of all, it almost looks like a good bot in the sense that it does remove a particular miner. It doesn't install its own miner. So it's not one of those botnets that does just wipe out the competition. Instead, it actually removes itself after it runs. It does infect systems via the the Android debug port. And now we have seen this uh, for quite a while now. Apparently Fire TV sticks are particularly vulnerable to this. Uh, That's on port 5,555. Another sort of interesting twist here is that for command and controlled, it uses a .lib domain. Now, .lib is not a domain that's sort of officially used by ICANN and such. Instead, it's only really used by MRDNS, which is a blockchain controlled in DNS system. Now, the bot isn't actually able to query MRDNS directly. Instead, it uses OpenNIC, which is a set of open DNS servers that are able to essentially bridge to MRDNS. Now, 
I think it was uh, last year we had an STI student that actually wrote a paper about how to potentially control a botnet using blockchains. Now that paper pretty much uh, used Ethereum and smart contracts in order to accomplish this. This sort of another twist on it. Uh, I guess it's easier to essentially just use DNS without essentially relying on any kind of a central DNS infrastructure. And well, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.